El Pfeiffer really is traditionally different from other games in terms of loot. So I thought we would talk about that first today. When L5R was created, it was made as a little bit of a rebellion against Dungeons and Dragons, where the point of the game is to find people, kill them, and take their stuff. That was pretty much the primary game loop, as you might say. But everybody likes to get rewards for their gameplay. When L5R was created, it was intentionally created with some mechanisms in it to prevent that from happening. I believe that is why they included, although they did not have to, the whole idea of the Burkuman case and not being able to touch dead bodies. I think that also the whole, you get all your stuff from your daimyo, we've talked about that in terms of the economy. This was 1995, and I think there was a, quite a few games that were very specifically trying to push back against the standard Dungeons and Dragons mold. Like Vampire the Masquerade had come out in 1991, and I think Legend of the Five Rings was very much part of that. It's trying to be a game that had more social consequences to what you were doing, but also wasn't about kill people, take their stuff. So some of the weird things, maybe unsettling things about L5R were specifically added to counter gameplay to that and make it so that you don't do things for that kind of reward. Also, the incorporation of honor and glory as rewards. Yeah. And and also, although there are magic items in the game, there aren't really very many concrete rules for them honestly speaking you don't have this big huge loot table of of magic carpets and magic rings and magic this (laughs) and magic that in fact in the early editions of l5r such things were pretty much non-existent fifth edition adds them to a much greater degree than they were in early editions of l5r so that's how we got here why L5R is different in terms of loot. And we have these elements of the world that go against that. But we like stuff. We like to improve our characters. We like to get better. And so it's different now. First of all, the one thing that D&D and L5R share is the idea of earning experience during your gameplay. So let's talk about experience. Experience points. There are, it's quite different from actual Dungeons and Dragons. You don't get the thousands and you don't go up levels with your experience points. You get experience points and you can spend them and that get, gets your levels. But getting experience points is part of how you advance a character as part of the reward. In 5th edition, experience points are awarded Generally, every session, some GMs choose to differ from that, but I feel like that's pretty normal. You normally get one XP per hour of play, and then you've got this discretionary bonus. They recommend in the books three to five XP when the party overcomes a significant obstacle. They do say GMs can give individual bonus XP for very good role play, but you have this idea of you needing to balance your party. So maybe this per as a GM, you could say you were the star role player this session and then make it somebody else the, the next session or something like that. The other thing that people use XP for, which I think is good, is if you want your group to do bonus activities like making sure they take notes or drawing their maps or something like that. Giving XP as a reward for that is usually a really good incentive. Yeah, you want to try to be even-handed to make sure that everyone gets some kind of opportunity to do that. Because if you end up with one person who can draw and they get XP for drawing and someone else can't, they can end up feeling like they're falling behind because they, they feel they can't contribute. But you should be able to find something for everyone to contribute. Right. Because it's your party level and you want to keep your whole party on the same level, otherwise it's really hard to give out threats that are appropriate for your party. You want your XP to be equal and spread around the party. 